Hi there, my name is Richard Bromwell and I'm still here talking about our huge June two-day auction. Now this is coming up on the second day, so this is Friday the 22nd of June. And again, it's part two of our huge collectors, antiques and interior sale. Now, I'm gonna start off in uh, the back zone as we normally do with our walk and talks. Now this is a bit like London buses, Royal Rinton, Marguerite Chintz Teaware. So we've got some there. That actually was bought from the tip of 50p. And over here, we've got some more of it. And it's almost like it's been breeding. Um, but both sets kind of one to 200 pounds. Uh, it's unusual to see, um, and these days, you know, tea wares can be a little bit tricky because we see hundreds of tea sets every single week, but that's still a pattern that is quite popular. Through here, again, we've got some lovely Paul Pottery, this wonderful sort of geometric, very strike balding uh, designs here. Sadly, most of the pieces in this lot uh, have chipped and cracked. They've certainly been well loved and enjoyed over the years. The result being sort of a lot like that, again, is another good hundred pounds. But up, up through here, now wherever we go today, we're gonna see teddy bears. Up here, we've got teddy bears and teddy bears. Coming along here, we have some more teddy bears. Um, up through here, uh, unusually, we have more teddy bears. This is a, his sailor bear. Now, a lot of these are stife. A lot of these are modern collector's bears. They're limited editions. They're all with their boxes and bits and pieces. We've even got stife Teddy's watch. There we are with all the little watches there. Uh, I know George behind the camera, that's a personal favorite of his one there. <laughs> Uh, and here we are, Goldilocks and the Three Bears limited edition set. I'm always very skeptical about a limited edition set because I think they couldn't sell that many of them. But if you don't like teddy bears and you like militaria, then down here we've got swords, we've got Japanese katana, we've got German, we've got court swords, we've got cookeries, we've got guns, a lot of, again, a lot of mantis, you've got a sort of a, a French gladiator type sword up through there. But again, if swords aren't your things, we can go back, yes, we can come back along to teddy bears. And here's, here's this is Mr. Ticklefoot here. Um, these. <laughs> It gets worse, doesn't it? The, we've got Stife on here. And these, these ones here actually are Charlie bears, uh, hugely sought after, and will probably make many hundreds of pounds each bear. But also the collector sells, we also have a lot of clocks. Now we have mantle clocks, we have bracket clocks, we have a Congreve ball, rolling ball clock here. Uh, this is made by the owner. Again, wouldn't it be wonderful to have the, 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 the skill to make something like that? The only thing I can make successfully actually is a cup of coffee, and even that's debatable on occasion. So for a Congreve clock like that, kind of two to 400 pounds. Down here, if you like your clocks big and big and flash, uh, this has come from a local, local client here. You've got chime and silent. Cambridge chimes, chiming out eight bells. Again, it's a very big noisy clock, ran about a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds. This one a little bit smaller with its doors off, missing bits and pieces, probably a little bit less. Um, but again, they will all tell you the time currently right twice a day. We've also got a couple of music boxes here, um, which I won't try and play because uh, they probably don't work very well. This one's a nice little early lever wound one. That's a that's a Swiss one. And this one here, this one's poor little chap is missing some of its teeth, isn't it, on its comb? there. Quite difficult to replace um, as a result for a little one like that. You'll probably look between £100 and £300 for the one in better condition. So down through here we've got an early early child's toy here. I don't know if I can uh, just show you. This. Isn't, isn't that, can you see that George? This is how people used to entertain themselves the day before Love Island was about. Do you watch Love Island George? No. I think you're lying, George. I think you're, I think you're telling a porky pie that. You're young enough to watch that. Uh, they threw here more, more, more stife, corbels and bits and pieces. And again, George, I'm afraid, I'm sorry to go on, you're not that young really, but you are too young probably to remember telephones like this. In fact, even I am too young to remember a candlestick telephone. Um, come from a local deceased estate here. A nice little collection of phones. This from the same house, this is a, a, a French Eiffel Tower pattern, isn't it, George? Is yeah. That right? Yep, Eiffel Skeleton, Tower. Yeah. Hello, Derby 328. There we are. And uh, that one's probably two to 300 pounds on its own, but also from the house. And it's amazing what people do collect. This is a fascinating thing here. This is the Hangman's Record here, a marvelous book to settle a dispute. And this is signed here by Albert Pierpoint. Now, he was the hangman who hung hundreds hanged. of. Hanged. Hanged. <laughs> It's a good job you're here, George. He, he, <laughs> yeah, I think hanged is definitely right, isn't it? Yeah, um, you've got me thinking about that now. He, he, he hanged uh, hundreds of people and he was the last hangman in this country to hang people, um, signed by him, probably around about 100, 150 pounds. So that is but quite a, quite a, a rather gruesome thing, but people like gruesome things. Um, some people like 
teddy bears. Some people like Militaria, but through into here. Um, we've also, uh, which we're gonna just kind of quickly sort of glance past. So this is all part of our collections, which come on the first day. And here's, um, there's a plaster, a plaster maquette bust of red rum here. And up through here, that's a little, gonna be a little bit tight going up through here. We've got lots of furniture. We've got 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th century. We've got that furniture from uh, the continent. This is actually, for, this is a particular one, is a Channel Islands uh, linen press there. This has come up from a client uh, down in Devon, a, uh, a gentleman farmer down here. Up through here, obviously we have more teddy bears. Um, I think some of these actually might have been breeding uh, more teddy bears and bits and pieces. And up through here, uh, which again a little bit tight again uh, more there's even more teddy bears shoved in here uh, but I wanted to come up to the corner here to talk about uh, the the Dutch inlaid walnut musical long case clock here now this is in quite a state um, this I would imagine probably hasn't run in probably a good 40 or 50 years it's an all singing all dancing Dutch long case clock dating to around about 1720 maybe 1740 requiring quite a lot of restoration if you look down here we can see parts of it this actually is the it sits on top of the hood here and you can see the layers of dust um, now we're going to call that character because people like character in our business and a clock like that ran about between two and four thousand pounds moving on through here um, we, we've got an optician set of lenses uh, should we have a bit of a go no I've got glasses on already I, I, I don't think I do you think I should put these on George yes go on. is that is that better yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, George. Right, I put my, put, put me bifocals on. Moving it through here, we've got the Charterhouse snack department. Um, we've got Mr. Kipling. So we've got Walkers, and uh, there's just there's more crisps and chocolate. Anyhow, we no auction house should be without crisps and chocolate through here we've got weird stuff we've got a ship's binnacle uh, i kind of quite like this in some respects you want to myself in the mirror there in fact show you show yourself george there we are show yourself there's george isn't this great i love this painted decoration on there bit of a mixed lot with sort of church chairs another sort of 50 or 80 pounds coming on down through here We've got Globe Vernick bookcases. We've got chest of drawers. We've got trunks and bits and pieces. And this, this I like. And uh, it, it's we're so full in both cell rooms that we've had to stack it high this time. You've got this wonderful continental late 19th century carved wood fireplace. Um, and obviously, in front of the fireplace, you would have a fire screen and uh, wonderful I love the, the the amount of work that has gone into making all this absolutely superb they're being sold as two different lots the fire surround is estimated between four and six hundred pounds and the fire guard here a little bit of a more modest one to 150 but it wouldn't surprise me if the if the fire guard actually goes on and sells very very well just like the surround down here uh, we have a do you know what this is George is that an abacus? It is an abacus, that's right. That's right. Uh, you know, you'd probably use your calculator these days. But uh, um, through here, this is an interesting thing. Uh, this has a sweet little label on it as well. Um, it's probably Welsh, a little little sort of big, tall wing back uh, little seat there. And over here, lots of stamps, bits and pieces. And as it's a collector's sale, we've got lots of stamps. So in here, this is one of my favorite uh, lots of stamps here. And this is purchased from Warwick and Warwick here, a lovely penny black here. Now the penny black came out on the 1st of May, 1840, and uh, went through until, I think it's, I think it's towards the end of um, uh, February in 1841. And because they printed them all on sheets and all the sheets were numbered and they know how many they printed, they printed something like 68 million, 808 thousand penny blacks in that short period of time. So so if you've got one, yes, they're unusual, but they're not so incredibly rare. That's a very nice one. It's got broad margins on it and purchased in Warwick and Warwick. Nice history, nice provenance. So you can see, hopefully see the, uh, the nice broad margin because these were cut through with scissors and often they were actually cut through into the stamp here. Nice red Maltese cross cancellation. Um, paid £180 for it in the late 70s and the estimate on that is probably quite similar today. Also on coins, now we sell coins ancient and modern here. This is one of the year proof coin sets and this is the 2009 and what is the rare one is the Kew Gardens there and that 150p is probably worth between £100 and £150 on its own. The rest of the coins probably £20 or £30 but that one, that's the rare one to go for. And also, as well as the coins, we have a lot of, a lot of militaria. Now what's the first thing you learn about guns, George? Never point a gun at anyone, even if you know it's not loaded. So I'm, I'm going to behave myself here. So all the staff over there, they can get shot. Uh, these are a pair of Belgian 
probably C issue uh, flintlock pistols here. Nice to have a pair of them here. Um, probably around about sort of four to six hundred pounds. The market for uh, nice early weapons, still still quite strong here, but kind of general issue there. And still up with a C theme here, and uh, we've, we've got the medals uh, and ephemera. Here we are. What a fine looking fellow. Here we go. That's, uh, that's Commander, what, I've got his name now, Commander Henry George Tidy. And we've got his medals here, all Second World War, um, none of the names, which none of them were. We've got his uniform and bits and pieces, a really nice, interesting selection of bits and pieces there, straight from the family to auction, and probably sort of two or three hundred pounds. But a bit more expensive, two to three thousand uh, pounds, is the George Smart here. Now this is one of a pair here. There's the old postman with his donkey here. Uh, George Smart, this is very, very typical of him with his felt work and painted backgrounds in a lovely sort of bird's eye maple frame as well. Uh, we've got this on the front of our catalogue as well. Wonderful decoration, lovely naive art, as I say, worth several thousand pounds. So there's a bit of a whistle-stop tour through our, our second day's auction coming up on Friday the 22nd of June, and I hope you enjoyed the walk and talk today.